Okay, the recording has started, and I want to welcome everyone tonight. I'm Ann Kennedy. I'm a transition facilitator with Baltimore County Public Schools, and this is one of our monthly transition chats. Welcome, and our topic tonight is self-directed services, and really the target audience for this chat tonight is uh, people who are interested in pursuing DDA services. So you can pursue traditional services or you can pursue self-direction. And we're going to hear more about that um, from our two um, speakers from Aviso Resources, Veronica Nayokas and Stacy Smith. So welcome, ladies. And I'm going to turn over the, um, the presentation to you. And we'll go, you know, as long as we go uh, up until about 545, and if we need that much time, and then we'll have welcome questions from everyone. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. Well, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so I don't know how many years now I've been doing this, but um, I just, I'll just give information and then we'll, we'll go from there. And I, so Anne, I'll, probably the one resource I'll give is DDA's website, unless you already have that one, because that one has a great self-directed page now. I'm like, kudos to DDA for that. So, um, but I'll, I'll put it in the chat box. So okay. You can okay. Talk. Yeah. Great. All right. So, um, self-directed. It used to be back in the day. So, if you hear this rumor, it's not true anymore. You, if if you choose self-directed, you can blend that with traditional. If you want to, per, we call it purchasing services from a provider. So, if you know, if you don't, if if you just want to go strictly traditional, then that you know, like Ann said, that's. You just work with an agency, but um, if you if you're feeling like or you're learning as you you're planning with your CCS or as you're um, gathering information, if you feel like a blended plan suits your needs, more and more and more people are doing blended plans. So, um, you know, your overall you would overall you would pick the self-directed model, but then you would pick and choose or purchase your whatever services you want to you want to chunk out with an agency. Um, and DDA really, they view that partnership as like a business partnership. So if I am, you know, if I'm the individual receiving services, I'm I'm the participant, um, DDA says, I have the, I have the authority, the budget authority, the employer authority, the right to enter into a business relationship with an agency for them to vendor or contract to provide me with whatever services those are. So on DDA's website that Ann put in the chat, that's where you can find um, what we call reasonable and customary. And so as you're, whether you want to staff your services, whether you want to vendor or contract with an agency, you can get a sense of what, what are the standard rates? What, is, what do providers charge? What is the going pay rates for employees? that kind of thing. Um, so self-direction, it's it's kind of like, it's your world. It's, you know, like you're, you're, for your child, you are, you're creating whatever that day looks like or that week looks like or that month looks like, you know, so it's very, it is very person-centered. Um, some people have said that self-direction can feel a little isolating, so that might be to some people that might be a con, you know, um, it can feel a little isolating, but my recommendation is that you you get with some other families that are also doing self-direction and you build your networks or you build your, you know, your, your community that way. Um, probably one of the number one reasons I hear people want traditional is because they want that socialization piece. And, and you know, and just know you can, you can have, you can have both. So um, for if you if you do self-direction and you're going to hire your own employees, probably one of the biggest questions I get is around Maryland, like Maryland labor laws and like, how do how do we do that? Doesn't the FMCS do that for us? Yes and no. Um, and so that's where brokers usually come in. Um, people I'm going to ask you if you use an acronym, Veronica, just say what it is. The whole okay. Thing you do it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Did I say FMCS? Okay. That's <laughs> catch me in. All right. So that's your fiscal management uh, provider. So they are uh, basically, they are your accounts payable. So when you self-direct, DDA puts an intermediary in there to funnel your funds. Um, so that's another people ask all the time. 
well, how do I get who? How do I get the money? You don't get the money. The money stays with the FMCS provider, and they will issue payments to your vendors, your staff, your reimbursements, all that, um, just like accounts payable. So, um, so the FMCS provider, they do your background checks. They make sure that you're in compliance with training and things of that nature. But because your child is really they are the employer and some people are like that's kind of that scares people a little bit that's why you have the option to hire a broker so brokers should be to a point you know they don't need to be like they don't need to be like they worked at maryland dllr but they need to at least know where to find information um so even me i've got you know years and years and years but there are times where i have to say hold on time out i gotta go to maryland dllr and i gotta look this up real quick because i don't know what the law is but that's where we want to make sure that your child because they are the employer that we're following and we're abiding by maryland dllr so you know you're not required to have a broker unless you're going to have family and staff, then it's a requirement. Um, but some people just choose to have a broker because it's an extra team member. It's an extra set of eyes, ears, all that good stuff. Um, so Can I ask a quick question about that? Yeah. Does the broker um, money come out of the person's main budget or is that an extra that's added to their budget if they want the broker? DDA, it's added DDA funds brokerage. So, um, that's another misconception is that it, it, it back in the day we used to be overhead. We're not overhead anymore. DDA gives us our own funding in LTSS. Um, where we get into a little bit is that if you want, if you need or want your broker for more than what DDA funds us for, then you might have to dip into your unallocated or your extra money, or you have to figure out how to support that cost. Um, but DDA will, at a minimum, DDA will cover up to four hours per month for the year. So uh, the equivalent of 48 hours annually for brokerage. Um, and DDA will also cover startup costs for the broker. We're like actually the one, we're, the, we're really the only, just about the only, there might be like one or two other one-offs, but we're like the, the one service that DDA will allow the participant to receive before their services have begun. DDA lets us back bill. Um, so brokers, you know, if you if you want a broker, you can onboard or hire a broker to help you as you're going through that prep process leading up to graduation, which typically starts right about now. So that's why that's why Anne, that's why they're doing this night. Um, so and probably this isn't the end of the world. I will I will caution parents on here. It's it's never fun from the broker standpoint when we get brought into a case at like the eleventh hour because then we don't we don't know what's going. We're we're trying to catch up and it never fails year after year after year. I get those phone calls on like June thirtieth. Like my kid's supposed to start services tomorrow. We didn't hire a broker. Now we realize we need one. So. Try not to do that. <laughs> Try not to do that, um, because then we're, we're we don't know we don't know what's going on. So it's 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 best when if you get a broker, get them early and have them through that process leading up, so that you know we're all we're all in the know. But um, can I ask another question about yeah, that? Yeah, I'm I'm breaking my rule about asking the questions at no, the no, end, no, no. but I'm going to okay. ask them as they come to me. Um, so, okay, you're working with your coordinator of community services, mm -hmm. the CCS, in that last year of school. And they add you to the wave. You start the waiver process, say, in March or April. Um, you may not find out about your funding until April, sure. May, you know. Um, yeah. But you can pull a broker on board at that point or before that point? You can pull a broker on and then beforehand. Um and I, I know what you're getting at, Anne, and this is all, it's a gr it's gray, right? I wish it was black and white and I could say, yes, this is, so I have next to never, typically, typically anyone that is coming through this transition process that's, that's captured and you're going to be wavered. 
there's maybe one out of hundreds that like there's an issue like one i can think of one family in particular they didn't qualify for the waiver because they they didn't listen to their ccs and they didn't listen to their transition folks that said your kid has too much ass too many at like you need to deal with your assets the family didn't listen so that one person they were they qualified from a developmental disability standpoint they didn't qualify from they had two they had over two thousand dollars in assets in 10 plus years that's the only case i have ever seen where the person couldn't get wavered so in that case the, if there was a broker in which I was not, I came in after, but if there had been a broker, that broker wouldn't have been able to been, be paid at that point. But most of the time, you're going to, you, they, they're going to get wavered. I think um, the DBA eligibility unit has done a really good job in making sure that person is eligible by yeah. the time they get to that that point. So if you're if you're already enrolled in DDA on the waiting list of, of some kind, um, you know, they're going to, especially if you have a CCS who comes on board, you know, the eligibility is not going to be the problem, but you should yeah. never have more than $2,000 in your child's name um, yeah. you know, after they get older. And they're, we're, in May, we're going to have somebody here from ABLE talking about how to protect those funds. Per perfect. So, yeah, so that, that again, that's the only case. So, so yeah, so, I mean, me personally as a broker, I think um, t typically, like, somewhere between january and april is like that's like the golden like get your broker lined up i mean it's okay if you wait until may but i would caution like just just know if you wait and you wait number one it's going to be harder and harder to find a broker because there are, chances are they're already getting stacked up but I've, ta I've taken people at the 11th hour. I just tell them, right, I'm like, look, I'll work with you, but you got to, like, bring me up to speed, like, real quick with what's going on. Um, so, yeah, it's never too early. Brokers are just, DDA will cap us at 15 hours for startup. So just know that. We can't, we can't get more than 15 hours um, to start, to help people with that startup process. Um, so the, I mean, that's kind of like, I guess those are like the really important things. The other important thing, because as we approach April, so if you're going to hire staff, um, it's important to try to get their onboarding started at least 30 days in advance. Um, the, the fiscal management, the FMCS, they're the ones that do your background checkings for you. So you want to give you want to give enough time. Like if you if you try to get a staff's background done like 48 hours before you want them to start it's not like that's not not going to happen there's there's that background checking process depending on which fmcs provider you go with they all have they have different um processes for that whole piece so you want to you want to give enough wiggle room so you know and if you don't if you don't have staff lined up yet or you're not even like you haven't even got that's okay um you just want to try to know like even if it's one person like who am i hiring and have and by june 1st have we started this process if not we need we need to like we need to get on it and that and that might be help, getting help from your ccs and or your broker to make sure that that process is happening um so there is a related question in the box. I guess we're just going to ask questions as we go. So yeah. I'm, I'm going back on what I said before. So I like or, I like organic conversation. So bring yeah, it well, it's a small enough group. I think that we could we could just um, discuss what, what comes up as it comes up. So scratch what I said before and please ask <laughs> questions as we go. Okay. All right. So um, in the in the chat box it says, is there a guideline or documentation for the requirements for staff training? on top of additional uh, of required trainings is there a way to budget for additional trainings for staff and i think maybe you're talking about the staff that you hire not for the support broker so um you can talk about that yeah so um and training is the big one i get a lot of questions about training so for for and this is very different from traditional so keep that in mind traditional comes with a whole host of trainings that the provider agency takes care of self-direction there are it's just first aid and cpr is the bare bones so that's an osha like 
that's that's not even a, a DDA thing. That's an OSHA thing. Um, D OSHA requires that employees be a first aid and CPR trained. Um, Would you purchase that with your budget money? Yeah. With yeah. Cross or whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. DDA will allow mm -hmm. for the employee to get reimbursed, um, or the, if the family fronts the money on behalf of the employee, the the family can get reimbursed for it. Um, this also comes back to Maryland DLLR because so, and I very rarely have I come across anybody that chooses this, but this is an option. Because your child is the employer, you can choose to, you can choose to hire people that already have that. You can make that a, a, a requirement or contingent upon hire, like you will come with your trainings or Again, back to that, like that onboarding process, if they don't come with their trainings, you want to make sure that they're getting their trainings before onboarding. Because if you try to onboard someone that doesn't have first aid CPR, the FMCS provider will say, okay, time out. We've done the background check, but we can't proceed until they have first aid CPR. We see that all the time where people get hung up in that onboarding process because they haven't complied with that training requirement. Um, but you can budget that. So if you want to be able to reimburse your employees for that, you can budget that in, you know, in your budget with your CCS um, to make sure that that money is allocated in there for that. And then other trainings can just be part of your, your own, what you need for your, for your child, right? Yeah. If, yeah. If you need to have certain kind of, um, you know, experience with, you know, managing a lift or a chair of some kind or some device, you you get the training for that as part of your plan. Yeah, DDA does, again, because um, the your child is the employer, DDA says that's between you, you as the employer and your employees. Maryland DLLR has no standard with, there's, there's no requirements for that. So again, um, yeah. And if and if and I get this question a lot too, where families will say, um, "Well, I'd like my, I'd like like what what trainings are available? What trainings are offered? What trainings do they get in traditional that maybe I might want my my employees to tap into?" So again, that comes back to hiring a broker that has knowledge of that, or even if they don't have knowledge, like you know, work as a team to go find that information out. Um, we've worked with traditional provider agencies in the past to say, hey, can we just contract with you for you to provide this employee with the training that's required? So, you know, there's a lot of agencies out there that would be usually that are happy to help do that. So are there some examples of trainings that you have pursued for some of your clients? Like I'm thinking maybe medication, administration, yeah. that sort of thing. Yep, um, medication administration. So we we were commonly referred to it as CMT. So that's your that's your acronym. Um, we've so there's some nur there's nurses, DDA nurses that can offer that. Um, and nursing is a there's a whole another we're peeling back this self directed onion, right? So there's a layer of nursing that's sometimes in there. Um, but you can contract with um, other agencies that like dimensional healthcare, they're one that just popped in my head. They're a nursing agency that provides CMT training. So you can pay them to train your staff for that. There's um, like MANT. So MANT is like a behavioral type training. It's like a, it's, it's a safety training to protect the individual and the employees if there's behavioral issues. Um, there's bloodborne pathogens. There's um, seizure training like so if your child has seizures and you want you want your employees to be um to, to get an overview of like seizure specific training dda there's a dda training for that um back to ann what you were saying i mean like think about your child and your child's disability or their needs um because that can help drive like well, what trainings should we have or what trainings do we maybe want our employees to have to make sure that they're well versed and knowledgeable about my kid's disability um and, and that conversation that the support broker can help to that help. absolutely yeah. that and it can start with the ccs just so the ccs knows what trainings maybe he or she needs to include in the pcp and the budget but then having that with your broker because your broker is like your resource 
for like, okay, well, we've identified we need these trains or we want these trainings. Where do we go to get them or how do we, how do we get them? Um, so yeah, absolutely. Other, uh, oh, I think, did you, I think you're muted, Ann. Yeah, there was a question about um, can can you put the trainings in the in the budget? Can the brokers provide contracts? I'm making I'm trying to make sure that we address that. So, um, sure. the person who asked that question, if it hasn't been addressed, please um, dig deeper, and, and I'm sure Veronica can address it. Yeah, um, and broke. I will look just to clarifying maybe unless I misunderstood. Brokers, we don't. Um, it was funny. I was talking to somebody earlier today, and they had this misconception that like we like we're, we're agents, like we work, we, we're not any, we're not like, yeah, we, we, we are in the simplest terms, we are consultative. So we are there to consult with you as the parent and, or the participant and, or the team, like we're here, we're here to support the CCS too. We're really, we're us, we're your built in team support resource 411 that's that's our role our role is not to act on behalf really of the participant or the um unless unless there's a reason for us to do that but um i certainly have i have media i've helped mediate like when there's been a an issue between a, a team and an agency you know so i mean we we can act as that mediator role um but yeah, we're consultative. We're here to help, just like tonight. We're here to sit and listen and say, let me give you some resources. Here's what I, I hear you saying. Have you tried this? Like, that's that's our role, really, in a nutshell. Okay. Um, the person who asked the question said okay. that it was answered adequately. So that's okay. great. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could just walk us through sort of like the the, okay, so we've we've got the broker on board. It's May, and then you're starting to kind of design a program mm -hmm. for your person, right? Um, with the family, like, and that's going to be about how much staff they need. What other kind of things comes into that? Um, I mean, really, the sky's the limit. It's because it is person centered. And I know I'm being a little like bit, but it's it. it it's person centered. So it is what what you what you need or your child needs should and will look totally different from your neighbor. So I usually I do usually not caution, but I like put out there for families because families know families, right? And your kids come up through school together. It I just caution families like it's good to talk, but also like, just remember, like what my kid needs and gets might look very, very, very different from what someone else needs and gets. Um, so, but I mean, the sky's the limit. So it's it's kind of like, and year to year, it's going to morph and change and that is normal. And that's how it should be like, you know, if we think about our own lives, right? Like what I needed at 21 looked very different from what I need at 41. So keep that in mind as you go. And um, year one, I usually tell, I tell her, don't lose any sleep. It's not life or death. It's not like if you get, if you get in and you get wavered, that's like half the battle. Just take that year one in stride. And like, it, I promise by year two, by year three, you all, if you choose self-direction, you'll be like, I'm an expert now. I'm a pro. Nothing was scary. Nothing, you know, you just, you just roll with it. But that year one is really getting your feet wet and like understanding how the systems work and understanding like, okay, we tried this, this didn't work. Now we're going to try something new. Um, and DDA has done a great job over the last several years of really allowing flexibility and fluidness with the plan. So, um, you know, if you start off July 1 with a plan and by, you know, October, November, you're like, this is not working. You can go back to your CCS and or your broker, like as a team and say, we need, we need to revise some stuff. This is not like, this isn't working the way that we thought it was going to work. So nothing is really set in stone. There's a, you can, you can morph and change and, you know, 
So don't don't panic. Don't lose sleep. Don't. It's not that critical. So some people are going to want to hire their family members. Mm -hmm. um, are there limits on that? There are some limitations. Um, so DEA defines family as your immediate, like the participant's immediate family. So mom, dad, brother, sister. It can be adoptive, step, but cousin, aunt, uncle, grandparent. DDA doesn't care about that in terms of family and staff. But your immediate family, they have that has to be disclosed. So you have to disclose that to your CCS that, that you want to, you know, hire in your immediate family. Um, they are then that's when a, a broker would be and i think i think dda is putting that in policy effective july 1st so it would impact this group um prior to july for there's not a hard rule with brokerage but it's coming so um the other thing is that if you're a family member declared on paper you know you're you can't you're capped at 40 hours there they will not allow you to have overtime or exceed that um there's a whole process like if you if the team like you your ccs if you identify that there's a an urgent or a need for you to work overtime that has to get approved on a case-by-case -case basis with your regional um person at dda so as a general rule families can't get over 40 hours um um again that's really it like just disclosing it but but you're still a family member even if i'm mom i still have to go through first aid cpr i have to be background checked i i get high i get onboarded with the fmcs just like i was anyone else what about a, a, a payee an ssi payee um, that there, that's allowable. So DDA cut maybe I think it was guess it was during the pandemic, um, and there's still a lot of rumor mills and misconception about this too. The only the only time someone it doesn't have to be a family, but the only time someone cannot be onboarded as staff is if they are declared for DDA purposes, not court appointed, like legal guardian. If they're fine, legal guardians can be hired. But if you're if you declare with your CCS that you are going to be under a, a, what's called a designated representative, and that's DDA definition, then you forfeit your right or your ability to be onboarded as staff. So that, again, that's where a knowledgeable broker comes in because I've had many, many, many instances where. The CCS has accidentally, the, like the family says, I'm court appointed legal guardian. The CCS automatically trans, like, thinks, oh, that's designated rep. They're two different things. So you want to be cautious with that. Like on all of DDA's forms and paperwork that your CCS will give you to fill out, read them, please. Like I, I get this so many times where people don't want to, and I get it. It's a lot and they don't want to read it read don't sign anything that you don't know what you're signing or ask be like i need someone to explain this to me or you know let's go through this together as a team um but aside from that designated rep if you're an ssi rep pay you can be hired if you are a legal court appointed legal guardian you can be hired it's just that designated if you declare yourself designated rep you can't be hired as, as staff Good question. Great question, actually. What else? So how can you find brokers to interview and hire? You got to hit me with that one, Anna. Okay. <laughs> um, well, okay. DDA has a list on, there, on their website under providers. Yeah, there's a list. Yeah, so there is a list and um, it's extensive and it's it may or may not be up to date at all at any given time because um lots of people for various reasons go through that broker training like i've worked with people that have gone through the broker training but they just wanted to take it to like they had no intention of ever actually being a broker so your ccs is a good starting place to like say hey ccs do you have any 
brokers that you work with frequently that you know that you could recommend if your ccs doesn't have any i mean you could back to what ann's saying you could check that dda on their website they have a provider portal you can put in brokerage you can search your county your area you can search statewide so like for example i'm i'm one of the broker i serve all of maryland um not every broker does so you know if it's important to you to have a broker that is based in your county and this comes back to like what what's your needs right so some families don't need a whole lot and some and some families have hired me and said we just need you when we need you like we'll we'll call you other families say you know i like i really i need you in person i need you to sit at the table with me i like again person centered so when you're interviewing or you're looking for brokers you want to talk about all that like where what can what what do you offer what can you provide um it's it's very you know and if you hire if you start with one broker and you're like this isn't a good fit that's okay we're all we're used to that people have come and gone and i've even said sometimes like hey i don't think i'm the best person for what you need i think you need a broker that can xyz that is all normal and typical and like we should all there should be no hard feelings if you work with a broker that is like mad that you then that's not your people let them go let them go <laughs> and, and that's true of dda services across yeah. the board and that that's really different from school system you can't just say i'm mad at this school and i want to pick this school you know but right. when once you're an adult and you're getting adult community-based services you have a lot of freedom of choice and movement yeah yeah and 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 same for any service so not even broker like Ann's saying i mean if you hire a nurse and if the nurse isn't a good fit or you're just there's a you can you can say to your ccs hey i want to find another nurse or you know i want to i want to sever ties with this vendor and i want to replace them with this vendor. like it's it's all fine um but but yeah when you're you know and they're on dda's website it's out i will say that it's outdated but at least it gives you a good starting point there is like a support broker interview checklist um so you know you and that's, can, is that right on the dda website too it should be right on that self-directed um web page but um you know yeah and it, i know it's hard it's hard for families that are brand new coming so you know if you if you have a friend or you have another family that you know that's done self-directed for a while you could even talk to them and say hey who do you use for brokerage or what would what do you recommend that i ask my broker in my interview um obviously like a, a knowledgeable broker or somebody that's been around for a minute and has experience they're gonna they're gonna ask you a lot of questions in that interview process to kind of gauge engage with you and and let me tell me your story what okay here's what i'm thinking i'm hearing you say do you need this it, it should be you know a given a give and take um so yeah and stacy stacy i don't know stacy if you have any because stacy's relatively new but not like new new you've and you've you've been working some cases on your own so i don't know am i is there anything you want to throw in there like yeah, please do. I do have another question, but I want to let Stacy go ahead first. Um, well, I think that it, I think you're right, Veronica, too. It is it's a team effort. So you want to select someone that's on your team that cares. Um, I think that's the most important. And and no one's going to know all the answers right? because there, it's, it's ever changing. But um, as long as you've got a support broker that can knows where to ask the questions, how to ask the questions and and navigate you through it will just make it a lot easier yeah and knows where to yeah. go to get an answer if they don't right. know her. um i think and you know and like i i'm the type i'll be the first one to ask it i say to people i don't okay you're hitting me with something new i've never heard that before or i don't know that let's let's research that or let me go find so that if you have a broker that's can be humble and can say no i don't need like that's good that's good that's a good sign um yeah but yeah yeah it's very much a give and take back and forth um this might and to, before we go to your question Ian, i i do want to say this because there's been a lot of um confusion about this so brokerage back in the day 
was very different from what it is today. And DDA has man they mandated a while ago. We we work at the direction of the participant and or their their guardian or their spokes. Right. So if it's mom and you know we don't we're not we're not allowed to just um act if that so back in the day we went we did a lot on our own behind the scenes without like i would say to a parent hey i I went ahead i took care of that i call like dda has really changed our role in that because we're consultative and because you are our employers right so the individual we work for the individual too we can't just go do stuff and so there has been a lot of confusion from families old older families that have been in it for a long time like why didn't you just take care of that for me i can't because you didn't you you didn't explicitly tell me you know so just know that like if you hire a broker you want to have those conversations to like what what do you typically do how do you handle situate like we are really looking to you to say, yes, I'm giving you the green light to email so and so on my behalf, or I'm giving you the green light to process this invoice, or like we don't, we didn't, we're not allowed to just do that. So if we do it and we bill for it, and then you come back and say, I didn't give you permission to do for that, do that, like we're potentially looking at a, can we get paid for something that we did, you know? So, and again, you want to work with your broker on that for what works best for you and that team, but. We work for your your loved one just like anyone else does. Thank you. There is a lot of confusion about self-direction, so I really appreciate both of you being here to clear all, all yeah. those things up for us. Um, so say you go, you leave school and you go into a traditional program and you're going to the day program and you're just feeling like it's um, it's 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 more an interference in your life than um you know, something you really wanted it to be. Um, how hard is it to switch from a traditional model to self-direction? What do you, what's the process? It's not hard at all. It used to be more of a process. It's really not. Um, the first step is you want to inform your CCS. And like, I can't, even, even if the issue is not the day, like, let's say the issue is, like, you want to keep your CCS in the loop. Like, if you don't tell your CCS what's going on, they're not going to know how to like help guide. And you're, that's where your broker comes in too, because sometimes if there's, we see this a lot where I don't know, I don't know why, but like if you don't feel comfortable having that conversation with your CCS, bring your broker in, say, hey, I want my broker there to support me through explaining what the issue is or helping understand what the issue is. But your CCS would just do a revised plan. To, to inform DDA that, hey, we're moving from traditional to self-direction. Um, typically, I mean, if it's, if it's, let's say it's not an urgent, it's just a, hey, it's not working out. We really want to make this shift. Same kind of concept is like this planning process you're in right now. You want to give your CCS at least 60 to 90 days because there's a whole, there's a budget piece, there's an enrollment with FMC, like there's layers to that. Um, if you have a truly, truly urgent, like we have to make the switch, you still are looking at 30 to 60. So what we, worst case, what we've seen is that if you have a, if the, if the relationship with the traditional provider is damaged or there's a health and safety risk, some families just choose to to pull their child and keep their child home temporarily until the CCS can, you know, make that switch. But um, DDA, ha they have a bare minimum role that the F and Stacy and I, we, we, we deal, we're dealing with this a couple cases, but the FMCS can't even, they can't even do schedule your enrollment for at least 30 like they need they have to have at least 30 days heads up from the ccs and that there's a whole behind the scenes thing so if you, it's better just to have those constant conversations keep your ccs in the loop like we're going to stick it out but we really want to try to we want to switch within the next two months or three months so that they can help plan for that 
if you do pull your your adult child from a, a traditional program, is there a danger of losing your DDA funding? No. Okay. As long as your CCS is well, and I don't I don't mean as long as. Um, I'm thinking diplomatically. <laughs> so. And this is not, I, I'm going to say, and this is nothing against her. I, I come from traditional. I, I have a love for, tra there's, there's a place for traditional. But they also, people lose sight of that. If you're a traditional provider agency, you are operating under DDA licensure. And with licensure, there comes a whole nother set of rules, regulations that is lost on families sometimes and lost on, so, I've, I've heard provider agencies say, well, if you are absent for da 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 da, like you run the risk of losing your services. There is some truth behind that, but as long as your CCS is in the loop and your CCS is documenting what's going on and why you're like, you're, fi you're, you're fine. Um, you just want to be able to, like, your CCS needs to be able to show hey, we're making progress towards switching or we're, you know, whatever the case is. So no, I mean, you would, you're only really at risk if you pull your kid totally out of services, you don't, don't tell anybody, mm -hmm. you don't, right, you don't communicate and you, you, they're home for three months. Like that's when we're, people are gonna say, well, where's your kid? Like what's going on? What like, mm -hmm. yeah. aside from that, no. Right. And so if you are in self-direction and you decide you want to go traditional, is it sort of the same process? You, yep. You same. Let your yep. CCS same. know and then they can do the paperwork and you need to give it a certain amount of time to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and again, you know, keeping in mind that with self-direction, because you can purchase services from provider agencies. You, you have that. So, you know, we've worked with teams where they purchase Monday through Friday, just like, and the person goes and attends like a day program or community engagement program. And then they do, like they really do self-direction evenings, weekends. So, I mean, if you're, if you're wanting to go totally back to traditional, chances are you just don't like, you just, there's the, the layers of the work behind with something that might be too much like i would guess that would be too much and that you might choose to go back to, to traditional for that but but again having those come if you feel like this is too much on me i can't handle have that conversation with your broker or your ccs because there might be support there that they can help find there's this day-to-day -day administrative role now maybe a good segue so DEA allows you to hire, you can hire like an administrative assistant basically for your child. So that administrative assistant can help with scheduling appointments, scheduling your staff. They can't, you know, they're not the employer, but they can help with like, just like if mom or dad have to go to work, who's, who's helping run this ship, right? If it's, if it's not in the broker can't do it on their own. DDA has, that's another, DDA has mandated that brokers cannot cross into this day-to-day ad, -day admin role and day-to-day -day admin can't cross into brokerage territory. Mm -hmm. They really want us to stay in our lanes, mm -hmm. but a good cohesive team, your broker and your admin will work in conjunction together to support you. It's all about support. You know, Does so the admin like, person come out of your supports budget or is that an add-on also? That comes out of your budget. So that their DDA will not fund that. You know, if you want that or you need that, you work with your CC and your broker to carve that money out of that budget somewhere for it. But, um, but it's, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of support. It's just how do, how do you, what support do you need and how do we all rally behind you to make sure that you're getting what you need? So. Do you guys help look for staff if there's not family or friends who the family wants to hire? So, um, yes and and no. Uh, so, it's a little. So, I used to do that actively as a broker, 
and it just got to be too much for me personally. So me, like my, my agency, we don't, we'll support you through that and we'll give you tips and strategies and we'll give you template. Like I have an advertising template. I have a job description. Like I'll give you templates, but I, we can't go and like be your recruiter because it's just, it's just layered and it's a lot. So that's another area where that day-to-day admin Mm -hmm. can help fill that recruit. Like if you need help with recruiting, we get your admin person to help do that recruiting piece. Um, DDA will reimburse the you as the family or who you know whoever you identify that's going to put up the cost for the advertising they'll reimburse up to five hundred dollars per year for advertising so some families have you know for example have gone with like a care.com membership Mm -hmm. and then you or your admin can just go into care.com and post ads or take ads down or um so that's what i mean when like again brokerage consultative tips strategies how do you and your admin would be really like putting those into action there are brokers out there that actively do recruitment and advertising um they probably have smaller caseloads and can give you more of that one-to-one um attention with that you know it's just and again if you identify that's a need have that conversation with your broker and your ccs to make sure that that's getting put into the plan somewhere of who's going to do that for you good questions what if um my child does not want to keep living with me after 21 or after 25 or whatever can support brokerage still be involved yeah in kind of thing? okay yeah so only if you go um, we're we are we're only eliminated if you if you don't want us or or if you go into traditional so um and this is another reason too why i think people like the blended because you can still get a piece of traditional but keep your broker but um, not residential correct. but not, not- res- yeah so if you if you need what we refer to as traditional dda residential where you got your child goes and lives in a, a, a dda group home self-direction stops there you you know you lose your broker you don't you don't have anything that is self-direction anymore um there are workarounds with self-direction so and dda is i I believe they are actively working on how can we get to a place where even residential maybe has a component of self-direction because person-centered and self-determination is huge in maryland um so but the, there are workarounds in self-direction there's um i won't there's there's a couple different options i won't go deep into the rabbit hole with them but you have options and again that is where like some families come to me and say listen i'm not ready to do this yet we're thinking five years down the road but we want to start having these conversations have them you can do your short term your long term your Finance, what what financial do you need? What like what's your kid gonna need when they're 30? Like I'm all about like ha- proactive as as opposed to like, oh now we have a crisis and we need to like get emergency, you know, house. Like I know it's sometimes these conversations are like nobody wants to have them. Like what happens when I'm not here anymore? But it's that elephant in the room that you just have them just say look i don't want to do it but we need to talk about this what's the long-term plan yeah we definitely want to plan for these these things so they're not emergencies when they happen so there's a plan in place yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely Um, so it is uh you know getting close to six o'clock and i just um i've done a lot of question and asking and i wonder if there's anybody else who has comments you'd like to unmute and talk to veronica and stacy about or questions of your own. And then you guys, if you have some closing remarks after those questions, just you go right ahead. Uh, yep, I'll, I'll be quiet. We'll get with it. <laughs> I know this is always the, everyone's like reeling from the day and it's like, I've just worked all day and now they're throwing all this at me. <laughs> We get it. I can totally get it. So, 
So what what's what's your final thoughts for people? Um, um I guess I'll just go back to most the most important thing right now whether you're doing traditional or self correction is and I see I saw I can't read it and if you want to read it in a minute but um I think I see a question just your CCS has they are working on a timeline. They have to meet that timeline. So the most important advice I can give is just, just stay with your seat, like make sure your CCS is getting what they need from you so that they can make sure everything is submitted on time, approved on time, all that good stuff. Um, if you really, if you're, even if you're not sure if you want to do self-direction, a good another good place to start is just consult with brokers get yourself a list of five or six brokers or however many you know three is fine do those consultations like talk to because sometimes talking to a broker one-on-one -on -one privately can help drive your okay this is the right choice for us right now or actually no this is not the right choice like so consult with brokers and um and other than that It'll all be okay. Don't lose sleep. It's not life or death. Like I promise. <laughs> so the question that that popped in was, um, do you know when broker trainings will open back up? They're not on the website right now, and um, apparently they've been revamp revamping the trainings. Yeah, they are. DDA is in the. Pro we're happy. I'm I'm happy about it. Um, we have not collectively. We have not been happy with the way DDA has been providing brokerage training. So. Uh, there, we're on a hiatus. We don't know yet. We know that for all, unless they give another extension, like all of us, like right now I'm certified through 2025, but even those of us that are certified, they're going to make us go back through this new training and we don't know when they're going to roll that out. So I think for fam, there's a lot of times there's families that want to go through that broker training just to kind of hear, see, you're kind of, you're, you're stuck at the moment. Um, DDA has not been, they have, they haven't been as vocal with information to the public as they normally are. And I think that's because there was a leadership change and we're just, yeah, we're just in that, like the new, the new person that's deputy secretary, um, Marlena Hutchinson. She, I think she just started in January I, th I think we're just in a, like a little bit of a what they're on a pause so I I can't give you that and I don't even know for myself and I'm a little like panicked like I gotta get this new training too <laughs> so if I see something though and I can send it to you if I see a memo that'd be great yeah that'd be great and you know we have our core meetings and you can always send information that yeah and I'm sorry I've been a little absent from core I've been I've been, I've been working I've been working <laughs> quite all right quite all right all right um, if there are no more questions, I think we're right up against six o'clock in a few minutes. So um, we can end here. And thank you so much for yeah. your, all your information. Stacy. good luck as you get on your journey um, at, with the brokerage that yeah, you're thank doing. You. And, yeah. Um, and um, we'll continue having these chats until the end of the school year. Uh, the one in April 29th is about guardianship and legal issues, supported decision making. In May, I think on the 20th, it's um, ABLE accounts. And in June, we're going to hear about DDA housing support services, which is a newer sort of service that you can um, get from DDA. So okay. um, so thank you. And sure. please, everyone, keep joining us. We, we really, and you know, I learn something new every time I do these. So Same. yeah. All okay. right. All, All right. right. Thank you. Enjoy thank your you. evening, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.